Nick here, Education Coordinator for Grand Staircase Escalante Partners. Today, I'd like to introduce you to another evergreen, the pinion pine. As with many pines, we can look to the needles to start identifying the species. Pinion pines have one to two inch long needles that are gently curved and pointed at the tip. Pinus edulis has two needles per bunch, while the less common Pinus monophylla has a single needle in each fascicle. New growth appears bluish green, while older needles appear yellowish green. On the Colorado Plateau, pinion pines typically grow between 10 and 18 feet tall. Like the Utah juniper, the pinion pine is monoecious, meaning ovulate and staminate, male or female, cones, are found on the same plant. Female cones appear as what we imagine when we think of pine cones, growing from buds to green cones to brown cones with thick scales over the course of two years. The male cones grow in clusters of 20 to 40 at the ends of branches, appearing purplish red to yellow. This early in the season, we don't see these large clusters yet, but the process is beginning on some of the trees around here. The seed of this tree is the well-known pine nut. Pinion pines don't reach cone-bearing age until after 25 years of growth, and then produce pine nut crops every four to seven years. They begin to produce in large quantities when they're 75 to 100 years old, and can produce for centuries. Pine nuts have long been a crucial food source for humans and other animals. Birds like the pinion jay, scrub jay, Clark's nutcracker, and Stellar's jay cache these nuts, which is an important part of pinion pine propagation. Uneaten seeds can germinate and grow into the next generation of pinions. The pinion and scrub jays play a larger role in this propagation because of the greater degree of overlap between their and the tree's ideal habitat. In southwestern Utah, the southern Paiute have historically gathered in autumn to harvest and roast large quantities of pine nuts in preparation for winter. And the pine nut harvest continues to be important today, both culturally and commercially. The distribution of pinion pine is primarily a function of climate. Its lower limits are determined by lack of moisture, and its upper limits by biotic competition, low temperatures, and excessive soil moisture. As a result, the elevations where it can be found vary considerably, depending on local topography and geographical location. In pinion juniper woodlands, pinion pine usually grows on the higher elevation sites compared to its neighbor species, the juniper. Pinion pines are already seeing the effects of climate change. Multiple drought and high temperature years in the early 2000s stressed southwestern forests, which created favorable conditions for a bark beetle infestation. Scientists predict that climate change will cause more pinion die-offs in the future. Microclimates that are shaded, cooler, and wetter are crucial for pinion regeneration, highlighting the importance of supporting ecosystem resilience to maintain these kinds of spaces.